Hello, fellow traders, tis I, the Rumpled One. Coming to you on Thursday, February the 2nd, Groundhog Day, in the year is 2023, let's talk trading. Know what you are trading, part two with Walmart. These videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and differ from Walmart's. Walmart, welcome back. No, oh, thank you. And so uh, I kind of told you what we've been talking about. Know what you are trading. So uh, I'm, I'm sure the traders would like to hear your take on it. Well, you know, that, that it's an interesting topic, you know, because, you know, and I'm sure you said this yesterday, uh, but, you know, the idea that you know, your, your famous motto, right? It's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. Well, the thing is, in order to, you know, in order to go and uh, be able to trade something, you still got to know what it is that you're trading, you know. But the reality is corn trades differently than gold or something else. I mean, yeah, and that, that's, that's, that's the first part of it that, that really, really matters. And the second part of it that really matters is, you know, it's sort of, you know, you got, you got to understand where you're coming from and what, what you're actually doing and, you know, and how you're actually trying to achieve it. You know, and so you need to know what you, what you, what you got, you know, it's, uh, you got to know, you think about it, let's say you're, you're sitting in your GM, the general manager at, for a baseball team, a professional baseball team. You know, you can, the reality is you need to know who your, who your players are that you got on the field. You want to go and get this guy over here. He's a great player, but, you know, well, what are you going to trade for him? You know, what, what do you have resources that somebody's willing to go and pay you for? You know, and, you know, that's, that's what it really comes down to. You got to be willing to go and, you know, or not willing, but you need to really truly understand what you have that you're that you actually have as assets behind you and that's part of you know knowing or knowing what to trade as well as what are your assets what are you good at what are you not so good at you know and how do you marry the two you know if you're really good at seeing how the market's moving currently you know does that match up with whatever i'm trading does you know is is, is it a good fit? Uh, and it, again, it comes down to you know, uh, people probably say that I talk about psychology way too much. Yeah, you talk about psychology way too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but Walmart, maybe you could uh, uh, let me steer the conversation. Tell the traders, you know, about you know, you're a pound dollar man, so right. Maybe you can tell the traders about the pound dollar, what you see you know, why you trade it, what it is you know about the pound dollar? Okay. Well, what I see with the pound dollar is something that, first of all, it has nice moves. You know what I mean by that? It makes big moves during the day. You know, but it's not like crazy, like, you know, the, the, the new beast, as you call it, where you can literally have, you know, every single day, two, three hundred dollars, uh, two or three hundred uh, moves every single day. Sure, the pound, the pound does do that from time to time. But it doesn't do that all that often. But when it does move, the nice thing about it is it's, I don't want to say it's methodical, but it moves, you know, in a predictable way, you know, and so because it moves in a predictable way, you're able to go and, you know, make some money off of it. You know, uh, predictable, you want to really predictable, you know, you look at your favorite pair, which is the dollar yen. You know, it's just very, very methodical, methodical and everything it does, it's kind of slow moving. Yet at the same time, it can go and make some big moves for you. You know, uh, the, the pound dollar, on the other hand, it, it's, if you look at the chart right now, it's jumping, you know, sometimes as much as a pip every single day. That's kind of unusual, but that's also because we're, probably because we're in a knees heavy week here, you know, and so it's, uh, you know, that that's that's kind of the reason why it's kind of doing that uh, for us. But, but for the most part, you know, it moves and, you know, it moves around by, you know, everything can lose two, three points, you know, four or five points. That's what I like about it, you know. Um, yeah, it does go back and forth like anything else. I mean, it's, you know, I, I said this a long time ago. I haven't said this in a while on any of these videos, but it's still part of what my belief is on it, on any instrument, but especially on the pound dollar, is that it's a living organism, you know, and it moves in as a living organism. And you think about it, you know, as a person, when you go and do things, do you go and do things where you're just 
consonant, so you're trying to get from point A to point B, you know, in your life. I don't mean actual destinations in terms of a locale, but rather you're trying to get from, you know, having this standard of economy to a different standard of economy. Or you're trying to go, you're a young man or a young lady, and you're trying to go and you want to go and have a family. Do you just literally go forward with that and you, you see the person you want, you marry the person you want, you have the family that you want? I mean, sure, some people do that and it turns out that way, but most people, they go through an entire you know, life of you know, going in, testing things out, trying things out, learning about people, you know, becoming familiar with people. You know, well, trading is the same way, or at least understanding what you're trading is the same way. It's sort of like, you know, I know them. I can look at the pound and within watching the pound for 15 minutes say, hey, it's trading, it's trading normally. It's not sick today. When I mean by sick, it's doing things that it normally doesn't do. You know, and at the same time, I can say, oh, it's in this pattern right now where it's very jittery. Okay, I can make some money off this because I know what it's going to do. But that's, that's really knowing what you trade. You have to literally be so intimate with what you're trading at least I do with my type of trading, so intimate with what you're trading that you're able to go and actually go and say, hey, this is what it's going to do. I don't know when it's going to get there, I don't, you know, but I do know how it's going to get there when it goes and happens. And I think I even said that you know, a couple times even today with you, sir, where you know, it's going to go here because of this. Don't ask me when. At some point in time, it's going to go and do that. And that's just becoming very, very intimate with the pair and understanding how it's moving and uh, where it's been and where, where it would want to go. Right. Because one of the things I just noticed, uh, the pound tried to leave the uh, lower wick zone and failed, and that's like the one, two, three, on the M30, that's three M, four M30s in a row where it's tried to get a, out of that wick zone and hasn't closed above it yet. Right. Yeah, and it's, you know, but that's, but the, the pound, you know, with the wick zone, like for instance, I know the pound with the wick zone, does it work? Absolutely it works. There's no question about it. But it, it's funny because it doesn't, you know, I'm sure there's a pair out there where it happens like the first time or the second time every time. The pound's not like that. It bounces off of it several times. And then finally, it finally goes and breaks it and does exactly what we knew it was going to do. And so you have you know, come up with a strategy, okay, you know, and that's the thing, you know, with all the statistics and everything that we have, sir, you know, and all the methods that you've put out there, the reality is what, everything you said is true, okay, it doesn't like to stay in the wick zone, okay, we know that, but the particular pair that you're trading, how does it not like to stay in, the, in that wick zone? Is there something else that we, that we need to go and take advantage of in order to go and make money on it. And so, you know, you say all the time, you know, or a lot of times anyway, you go and say, well, what is that missing piece? Okay. And that's the part that you, that really needs to be honed in on. Just because you know that it's going to go not stay in a witch zone. Okay. What do we look for as to, okay, this is the breakout, you know, uh, of getting out of that witch zone? Or how do I go and position myself so that when it comes out of that witch zone, you know, I, I, you know, I'm able to go and take advantage of it because my spread, well, not my spread, rather my my stop loss is far enough away. That it's not going to endanger my account, not going to endanger what I need to go and do. Um, you know, uh, those type of things. You know, what have I put in place in order to be able to take advantage of it and be able to go and make money off of it? And you know, and every pair, every instrument that's out there is going to have things like that. You know, and so, yes, yeah, statistically we know, you know, statistically we know that during, you know, the New York, London, you know, uh, intersection of time, that we know that the pound's going to usually move almost every time 25 to 35 pips. Right now, that's, that's, that's what it for It's actually probably closer to 30 to 35 pips, you know. Um, we know that. It's just going to happen. Okay, how do we take advantage of that and protect ourselves and not just know that that's what it's going to do, but be able to predict that uh, on a basis that's, uh, that, that's advantageous for us. Right. Well, what else do you um, 
have you seen or know about the pound since we're talking about know what you're trading? Well, one of the things is that I know that during the hour, let's say it moves in one particular direction, okay? Generally speaking, the pound doesn't just run. Let's say it's running up, okay? It doesn't just run to the top the entire hour. What it likes to do is it runs to the top, and then at some point in time during that hour, it's going to regress towards the middle. And I'm not saying that it's going to go all the way back to the, to the open, but it likes to go and regress towards the middle. And I think that's where you got your idea of, you know, and you, I know you did the frequency distribution on this, but on 30-minute candles, why it seems to go and cover them, the, you know, why on a, on, a, on a high percentage of times it goes and covers the previous 30-minute candle. So you get, you know, you run your first 30 minutes, and let's say it goes and runs up 25, 30 pips, or, you know, but the second 30-minute candle, a lot of times it will go back, and it doesn't necessarily go all the way back to the open of the candle, but what it does like to do is it likes to go and run back to the, to, you know, let's say the midpoint or something like that, and then it may go back go back and rerun back up again a little bit. But that's just something that the, the pound dollar likes to do. Yeah, in other words, and let's just define cover means uh, from the previous candles um, closed till it's open. So, for example, on this M30, you can see here it covered from the close to the open of the previous. And then the same thing before, um, the previous half hour did not cover from the uh, close to the open. It took it a whole hour, but then that candle body was covered. So basically, the um, M30 candle bodies usually get covered in um, either the next half hour or it might take them a couple. And even if you look here, even with this big bar uh, or the big, um, what's that, was uh, four candles ago, 112 pip range, if you look to the left, look at all those bodies that it covered that it hadn't covered before. It's just something, um, you know, that... I noticed, and then I ran statistics to make sure I what I thought I was seeing, I was really seeing. Right, and that's the thing, you know, that's the important part about this, when to know, you know, know what you're trading, just because you're observing something doesn't necessarily mean that it's true, because you may not be the most objective, you know, observer. So what does that mean? That means you got to sit down and actually go back and be objective about it, and run statistics on it and see if it's absolutely true before you go and come up with a game plan to go and go you know, and play it. You know, otherwise you kind of just going and doing it blind. You know, sure you you may that that may be that may work out. You know, but the reality is maybe I'm just a little bit more conservative than the average bear. But I like to go and have some you know, have something that's actually out there proving to me that it's really true. I like to go and have some concrete that I'm playing against. Yeah, now we're, six, now we're six pips out of the wick zone. So. Right. Yep. And, and just drop down to three. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now will it go back into the wick zone? Probably, you know. But the, and that's what I mean by the back and forth on the, on the pound dollar likes to do that. It's probably go back into the wick zone, and then, you know, and then it'll come back out of it. And you can play it. That's the nice thing about right here is that you could be playing this back and forth because of what the pound does. It likes to go into it and out of it, into it and out of it, you know, and take advantage of that. Make yeah. money off of it. So if you didn't take your six pips, now you're about two pips underwater. <laughs> exactly. You know, but at the same time, knowing that the pound does that, hey, go and just take, take the money while you can. You know, that, that you know, some people don't say, well, you know, that's a little foolish, you know, you could have gotten a big run. Well, yeah, but that's just not what I do. Right. You know, just go and take the money, stack up, put it in the bank. And you know what? <laughs> Boys and girls and non-binary traders, <laughs> the fastest 15 minutes in trading is up once again. So um, whatever it is you trade, you really need to know what you're trading. But always remember and never forget, it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. This is the Rumpled One, over and out.